Let's just take a breath here. And we're getting ready to take a journey. Oh, Another yeah. journey. Yeah. Mm. We're going to do it. 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 We're going to go on another little bitty ride into the way of the heart. Mm -hmm. So just take a breath. Remind yourself why you're here, why you decide to come. And one thing that's really cool that I realize is that everybody that comes is sent. So I'm never really that hung up on numbers anymore. I know the perfect people are always in the room, all the time. And so you're the perfect people. How does it feel to be the perfect people? Doesn't that feel, doesn't that feel really special to be the perfect people? I know, I know. So uh, here we go. Close your eyes just a minute so we can let go of the world together. Now, to build on what you have been doing, we would simply ask you to add this very simple practice. Add this very simple practice while you're sitting in your chair abiding as love, as abiding as the true self that the way of the heart calls the Christ. Abide as your true self that the way of mastery calls the Christ. Do you want to remember the truth that will set you free? Do you want to remember the truth that will set you free? Begin to ask yourself this simple question. This day, how can I extend my treasure? 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 Take a breath. How can I add to that which I'm storing up in the heaven of my consciousness? How can I add to that which I am storing up in the heaven of my consciousness? How can you add to that which you are storing up in the heaven of your consciousness? How can you add to that which you are storing up in the heaven of your consciousness? Immediately, you begin to get pictures. Maybe an old friend who needs a phone call. Maybe someone to write a letter to. It could be something as simple as picking up your pet and placing it in your lap. It could be something as simple as seeing all of the infinity in that living being, feeling the joy that comes from just rubbing your hand along its fur. It could be something as grand as going, taking a trip in order to send a blessing to your president. It doesn't matter what it is, it doesn't matter what it is, it doesn't matter what it is because that voice of love will be guiding your actions. Let the voice of love guide your actions. It may be as simple as turning to a relative, a spouse, a mate, a friend and saying, you know I appreciate you. 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 Whatever it is, let the day not fade away until that action is accomplished or at least set into motion. So the great question is, Am I willing to trust the flow from my creator's mind? Am I willing to trust the flow from my creator's mind? 
Are you willing to trust the flow from your creator's mind? Are you willing to trust the flow from your creator's mind? Are you willing to trust the flow from your creator's mind? Through your own mind is that which empowers you to extend your treasure. Are you willing to trust the flow from your creator's mind through your own mind? Ask yourself that question. Am I willing to trust the flow from my creator's mind through my own mind? So that which empowers me to extend my treasure. Yes, it does mean living unlike the world lives. I'm sorry. Yes, it does mean living unlike the way the world lives. It's time for you to live unlike the way the world lives. It doesn't mean going against the grain. It does mean going against the grain. Do you have nerve enough to go against the grain? Do you have nerve enough to go against the grain? You may seem to need to apply more energy to it at first. You may seem to need to apply more energy to it at first. You may need to apply more energy to this at first. You may seem to need to apply more energy to it at first. As you get the momentum of your mind, as you get the momentum of your mind to turn in another direction, as you get the momentum of your mind to turn in another direction, get the momentum of your mind to turn in another direction. You must shake loose all of the sludge that has settled in your consciousness. Are you willing to trust in the flow from your creator's mind? Working through your mind to empower you. Notice it says, are you willing to trust the flow from your creator's mind through your mind as that, that empowers you to extend your treasure? One of the things that's really powerful about that is that a person is really ready to be happy they have to make a decision that they're willing to live differently from the way the world lives. That's number one. Mm -hmm. And which really basically means I must be willing to see things differently from the way the world sees things. And to open ourselves up to hearing this is important for us to remember that we don't, we don't have to believe this. We don't have to accept this. We don't have to welcome this. Some of it's going to be hard to believe. Some of it's going to be startling. But we are not asked to analyze and judge it. If we use it, we'll see that it works. And it's fun, it's cool, and it's interesting, and it's exciting to hear. It's fun, it's interesting, it's exciting, and it's powerful to hear. It's fun, it's interesting, it's exciting, and it's powerful to hear. We're here because this is fun and interesting and exciting and it's powerful to hear. We're here because we want to be here because we're glad to be here and we want to hear this. Right, I can just, okay. That's why we're here. Okay, this is not calculus. <laughs> this isn't a calculus class, okay? All right, okay. This is this is something that wakes us up to have every single thing that we've ever wanted in our hearts easily and without effort. That's what we're about to learn, okay? Why so, say so? Well, that's why I'm doing it now, so I can remind everybody why they're here, okay? So. I'm going to cover about 10 minutes of material, then throw it open for questions and comments and, and do some more. Because I love to hear what this, bu this book is saying. It's saying some incredible stuff. And I want to make sure that we get a chance to talk, but I'm also really interested in hearing what Spirit has to tell me. So it says, but I can promise you if you would take up such a path, how? Simply, joyfully, gently, patiently. Where simply, are we? Where are we? Simply, joyfully, gently, and patiently. The way of the heart and the way of mastery on page... Uh, 131. 
131 in the way of master. So, so I'm going to go slow enough for us to get this. Okay, so it's saying if you're going to be on your path, the path is going to take you to what you want in all your in your heart. That the first thing you need to do is do it simply, joyfully, gently, and patiently. The Course in Miracles teaches that patience is nothing but you being certain of how it's going to turn out. The more you're certain of the outcome, the more patient you'll be, and the more you're willing to do it, the more patient you'll be, because willingness is what patience is. The Course in Miracles teaches that, that, that patience is abundant willingness. Like, if I, like when I was a kid, I wanted to learn how to ride a bicycle. You know how you fail and everything else, but you had an abundant willingness to ride a bicycle or to drive a car and out of your willingness, you kept doing it over and over again, but someone else looking at it would say, you were extraordinarily patient. You were just willing. So I'm impatient when it's what I'm not willing to do, and I'm impatient when I'm doubting how it's going to turn out. So to do something patiently, then, then, this, then these books are telling us, Spirit is telling us, let me tell you how the movie's going to end. It's going to end with you being happy ever after. That's how it's going to turn out. You're going you're gonna to end up in total fulfillment. Okay, now we know how it's going to turn out, so now we can be more patient. Yeah. Yes. Right? And also, it also said, if I'm willing to trust the flow from my creator's mind or my father's mind, so it's also telling us that the, the fulfillment of your desires are going to come from you allowing the flow to come from the universe, from spirit, through your mind. So it's not even saying you're the one that's going to ultimately source it. That's another reason why there's impatience. Because I'm not sure if I can do it. So I'm impatient, right? So it says the end of your journey is certain. See, it's telling us how it's going to turn out. It's certain. But if you choose a path filled with magic, which is complex strategies. If you choose a path based on complex strategies, he says then the end is not certain and the way is easy, the way is without effort. So if my beliefs create my reality and I accept it's true that my way is easy, which means without effort, then that is the path that I will find myself traveling on. That's the path I will experience it. Experience because your beliefs and what you accept is true. That's what creates your reality. That's what creates your perceived reality. Your mind, your consciousness, your thoughts are creating your experience. Your mind, your thoughts are creating your experience. So if you have thoughts that it should be easy and without effort, then you will find the universe absolutely supporting it because that's what it wants to do anyway. If you believe no pain and no gain, then you have to struggle in order to be successful, then that's probably what you are experiencing in your life right now. So he says, I am already that which I'm seeking. I need only allow it to guide me. I am already that which I am seeking. I will merely allow that which I already am to guide me. And while this body lasts, I will allow this body to be a communication device. That's what I'm doing. This is what, as long as it lasts, I'm using it for a communication device, and it defines communication as using your body to join minds and hearts. So communication isn't just words. It's any time you're using your body for love, for joy, for peace and awakening. Mm -hmm. You're using it in a way that heals it. Every time you're doing what you love through your body without guilt. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that now. I just blew most of our fun. <laughs> <laughs> we were really, we really going to have some fun, you know, until, that, until, until I said uh, without guilt. <laughs> Okay. So don't forget, especially if you're here for the first time, I have absolutely no interest in converting you or getting you to like me or like the class or anything because you don't need anybody else trying to get you to be any kind of way. I'm just going to be the presence of love. You can relax. Everything is cool. Okay? All right. Just relax because I'm not trying to seek your mind. I have a big enough deal dinner with mine. You know? So I don't need to try to get you to. I'm just here to love. And um, I don't know how to do it. So I'm here to get rid of the box to being able to do it, okay? okay. And so while your body lasts, you would allow it to be a communication device. What do you do with it? You allow your body to extend the treasure of perfect love. Perfect means complete. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use my body to extend complete love, perfect safety, complete safety, perfect peace to everybody that enters my house and anybody that enters my house is anyone that's in, entering my perceptual field. Mm. 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 
Yes, I'm kind of hot. Welcome to my perceptual field. That's right, come into my perceptual field. Okay, so the Course says, and your house is your field of energy. Your house yeah. is the expanse of your presence. Yeah. So right now, we have a room full of houses. And it says, toward the end of the five minutes, just five minutes, just five minutes of thinking about you, that which you already seek, I need only to allow it to guide me while my body lasts. I'm going to use my body as a communication device to extend love and safety and peace in a perfect way. And it says, if you were to do that for five minutes as the Christ, which means as the true loving self, the extension of the love that created us, it says, look at yourself from within your mind's eyes, though, from the day you began this course until now, you have journeyed around a circle. As long as you've been on your path, mm -hmm. you've journeyed around a circle. You have journeyed through many influences of energy. That's really important because that means you've engaged yourself in relationship with countless brothers and sisters. That means you've had thousands of visions and thousands of dreams and thousands of revelations that have come into your consciousness since you began your journey. Mm -hmm. You have had umpteen million opportunities to be disturbed. <laughs> That's right. You've had umpteen million opportunities to lose your peace. Mm -hmm. That might have happened to you today. It says you have been like a soul journey, the prodigal son or daughter who has gone through the realms of human consciousness, and now you see yourself complete in a circle. So what does that mean? It means everything that you perceive you have experienced in your soul's journey. You are only seeing the past. You're only seeing your own past. You are, there are only two kinds of people, people who are the way you used to be and people who are the way you are now. Oh, wow. Those are the only kind of people you meet every day. Mm -hmm. People with the attitudes you used to have or people with the attitudes you got right now. Mm -hmm. So every time you think you're around somebody that's different from you, you're just seeing the past. You've gotten angry in the past, you've been afraid in the past, you've been happy in the past, you've been excited in the past, you've been depressed in the past, you've been ecstatic in the past. There's not anything you can tell me that you're seeing in anybody an attitude that you have not had in the past or you have it now. So either, either I'm meeting people who want to go for the light like I do now, who want to wake up, or I'm looking at people who are the way I used to be. And so it says you've gone through every realm of human consciousness. You wouldn't even be in this class if you're here on a consistent basis and you're consistently focusing on the truth. You wouldn't be here unless you had already gone around the block so many times you don't want to go no more. All of y'all ain't around the block. You might, you might have these young bodies, or you might have the older bodies, or uh, you may have you know bodies that were born in the 1600s like mine. <laughs> That's right. I, that's right. I've had a reincarnational dream. And I was a Quaker. You should have seen the outfit. I had the hat. I had the buckle shoes and everything, you know. And, uh, and so it explains a lot about my childhood. <laughs> so that, just, just think about that for a second. You have gone through every realm of human consciousness to the point that now you're ready for something different. And every time you come up with another plan without asking spirit what the plan is, you're just choosing to repeat something that you've tried before in another flavor. Ooh. That's why you know what's going to happen before you even do it. <laughs> oh, so it's not we're, we're psychic? No, it's not that we're psychic. It's just that we're seeing the same. It's just like me going to a movie that I've already seen before predicting what's going to happen in the next scene. The reason why I can predict what's going to happen in the next scene is because I have seen the movie before. That's why you know how your relationship is going to turn out before you even get up started. Or you know how the job is going to be. You see? So the truth is, when you say, I feel like I've met you before, you have. Yeah. You, know, you know. So you're going to celebrate your rebirth as Christ. Now let's take the word Christ. Christ just simply means from a Course in Miracles perspective and a way of master perspective, your true self, your true eternal self, who you really are beneath the idea that you're just a separate body. It's the real extension of love that created you. It's the true self. And so it says you're going to be reborn as your true self. Um, you, you can tell when you're being reborn as your true self because as you are getting in touch with your new self, the way gets easy and there's less effort. Mm -hmm. the, the, the more untrue you are, the more you're struggling to yourself. So it says count the days 
For instance, if you're reading these words at another time of the year, simply, this is deep, y'all, I'm telling you, this is deep. It says, simply choose a date uh, approximately seven weeks in the future, mm. signifying for you that's going to be your day of rebirth. Oh. Okay, this is getting deep, okay, all right? Then it says, let each day be seen as a step. Let it be seen as a pilgrimage. Let it be seen as a completion of a very ancient circle each day. Seven weeks. So, so you will go seven weeks from whatever date you start. That's the date of your rebirth. So let each day be a day in which you reaffirm every day your commitment to releasing everything that's unlike love in yourself. Mm -hmm. So when you get up in the morning... You say, I'm going to commit myself to releasing everything that's different from love, different from freedom, different from abundance, different from joy. I'm going to release everything that's not like love. I'm going to release it. I'm committed to that today. So that as you come to your appointed day, you will be, you can dedicate yourself to being prepared for it because something big is going to happen on that day. And you're going to be building up to being able to uh, be prepared for what's about to happen. Hmm. Notice that the way of mastery is constantly giving exercises, things to say, things to tell yourself, and things to do to bring about the change, just like the Course in Miracles does the exact same thing. It has a workbook, it has exercises that you do every day. So it seems to me, and I might be wrong about this, but it seems like spirit, the universe, is kind of, is, is kind of hinting to us that we have to actually apply something. <laughs> it's a ridiculous notion if you're telling me without effort, but then it's telling me to do this. Now, wait a minute. What's the catch? Well, the more I do it, the less effort is necessary. Oh. So that means, for instance, this is what's going to happen right before your chosen day. Okay? It says, on the eve of your chosen day, go to bed early enough. That's right. Don't be out potting all night. <laughs> so don't make your chosen day on Sunday after you go out on Saturday night. You know. Okay? So, so that whacked out a lot of us. Got a lot of changed days. If it falls on Sunday, we're in trouble in this group. Okay? And say, say and in quiet and in prayer so that you can awaken before the first rays of the new day comes to caress the earth. Ooh. Aww, mm. the, the rays of the new day caresses the earth. That's some good stuff there. It says, now take yourself outdoors, even if you must bundle up your body and put on some clothes in Colorado, especially if you're here. It says, make haste to a place of vision, which is a place where you can look out over wherever you live. So if possible, try to go somewhere that you can kind of look out over everything. That's, I guess that'd be my balcony. Yeah. <laughs> well, make that convenient for me. <laughs> That's right. I go right over Colorado to the mountains in the Midwest. It says, let that represent your ability to look out over all of creation. So it symbolizes you're willing to look out over all of creation. It says, then turn to face the direction that the sun is rising in. Go into a simple prayer. All you do at that point is close your eyes and realize that you see nothing through your physical eyes anyway. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's deep in it. You don't see anything through your physical eyes anyway. Uh, the truth is, you see in your mind. And you know that's true because when your eyes are closed, you still can see stuff. Yeah, okay? So it's telling you that it's really not your physical eyes anyway. So stand with your arms at your side with your palms open, breathe deeply into your body, relax your mind, and begin simply to say within yourself, now this is deep because you don't realize it, but at that point, according to this, death has occurred. Okay. What did you say? Death. Death. D-E-A-T-H. Death, D -E -A -T -H. death oh. has occurred mm -hmm. because you're being reborn. Oh. Uh -huh. Then it says, and now the birth of the Christ or your true self is at hand. Mm -hmm. So you said, Father or Creator, I accept fully your will for me. So this is a dry run. Okay, we're doing a dry run right now. So we're going to tell ourselves, and I'll say it for you, death has occurred, and now the birth of my true self is at hand. My creator, I accept fully your will for me. My creator, I accept fully your will for me. Now what is that? Your will is only that I be happy. 
<laughs> I accept your will for me, and your will is only that I be happy. Your will is only that I be happy, and use time to extend my treasure. So I accept fully your will for me. Your will is only that I be happy, and I use time to extend your treasure, my treasure which is the happiness. So we're supposed to be here to be happy, to show that it's possible to be happy when you have spiritual awareness and awakening. So we're supposed to be living demonstrations of what happens when you actually surrender to your own greater self to guide you in your life, which is you experience and you radiate happiness. Mm -hmm. So when you say you're willing to let God's will be done in your life, all you're really saying is, I'm willing to allow myself to experience happiness and freedom so that happiness and freedom can be extended to others through me. Mm -hmm. I, my part is to allow myself to be healed and happy because it's not until I allow it for, my, for myself that I can be used as an instrument for everyone else's happy, so mm -hmm. happiness. So I accept fully your will for me. Your will is only that I be happy and use time to extend my treasure. Now I receive the warmth of your light and the warmth of your love. I receive the warmth of your light and the warmth of your love. He says, then merely stand there and wait. Wait to receive the warmth of the light, for rest assured, even if the skies are cloudy, as the sun arises, there is a change of energy in the air. Mm. If you are quiet, you can feel how the change in the energy in the air begins to affect the energy sphere of your awareness and of your body. Then you're going to drink. You're going to drink that solar energy. You're going to drink that solar energy in through every cell of your body. You're going to drink that solar energy in until you feel your very spinal column starts to heat up. Mm, sounds like the Kundalini is getting stirred. Mm -hmm. And when the whole body from the crown of your head to the tips of your toes, from the crown of your head to the tips of your toes, down through each finger, and each finger is filled with light, then gently open the eyes of your true self, the Christ self, and then let yourself see a new world. Mm -hmm. Let yourself see a new creation. Let yourself see a new beginning. Now the journey to the kingdom is over. And check this out. Now the journey to the kingdom is over. And the journey within the kingdom can begin. See, we keep going. I want to go to peace. I want to go to joy. I want to go to the real world. I want to go to love. I want to go where everything is nothing but peace and light. And what we just heard is when you allow yourself to have this rebirth, now you'll see what it's like to be living within the love, within the joy, within the abundance, within the happiness, and within the peace. Yeah. That's what I want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to always be a seeker, and you're not going to always be a learner, and mm -hmm. you're not going to always be journeying. You know what I'm saying? Like if you get, you're taking a trip to L.A., you do eventually get there. <laughs> <laughs> so journeying is not something we're going to be doing forever, no more than learning is going to. That's what attracted me to the Course in Miracles at first was. It said, this is the end of learning. This is your final lesson. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I was glad to hear that. Most people I just want to learn forever. I don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to create. Yeah. I want to, I want to be a creator. I want to be a part of the creation of something new that's never been seen before. If you go to if you go to school to be a doctor, sooner or later you're going to have to hang your shingle out. Mm -hmm. You know, if, you know, if you at some point you're going to have to be this stuff that we are studying. Yeah. We're going to have to live it. And so it's telling us that now the graduate school is just around the corner. Graduate school is just around the corner. Okay, any comments, any questions, any thoughts about any of the ideas 
and any realizations or questions of the ideas that we've covered so far, because that was a, a lot. Did anybody, what sense did you get around that whole idea of the rebirth? Anybody got any thoughts about that? I think the reality is it's going to be whether we choose to allow it to be real or not, whether we choose to actually do it. For anyone that didn't look it up yet, that's September 29th, um, mm -hmm. seven days. Virgo moon, day. thank you. <laughs> Um, we have to either believe it and do it or not. Mm -hmm. That's the result we're going to get. Mm -hmm. So September 29th shows up and, and we don't remember and we go forward, then we won't experience that because it's, it didn't start today for us. That, right, and I loved how it said you can start it anytime you want to, mm -hmm. but just go seven weeks into the future. Yes. I think that really tied in with um, the willingness and the patience aspect of it, though, is that the willingness and patience to do like the seven weeks is that you already trust in the outcome by the time you start on day one. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you if you know how the story ends, mm -hmm. then it's like the willingness to do it every day until that kind of the fruition of what you already know is going to happen. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. That's where the patience comes in. Yeah. You know. And Jupiter just moved into Virgo today. So what that yes. means for people who don't know is... <laughs> the time is the, now. The time is now. <laughs> <laughs> this is the perfect time. Yes. Just be specific. I think there's something also with the patience. There's a um, sense of excitement. You know, yeah. If you know the end, yes. it's, you're like, yeah, I can be patient because... Exciting. Yeah, it's like going on a date and knowing how it's going to turn out at the end of the night. Seven weeks from now. Well, I think it's interesting, too, that December 25th was the day on here, which is, you know, in, in traditional views, Christmas. Mm. And we wait upon Christmas. You know, kids wait upon Christmas, and they oh, tell me about know, it. The excitement grows yes. every day because yes. everything closes. But that gift, I can't wait. You know, maybe we cheat and go and shake the, you know, gift to see you know, there's something going on here. But we won't unwrap the gift unless we will and rewrap it. But <laughs> at some point, we get so invested in just the process of getting to Christmas that each day's discovery of the way to Christmas becomes a gift unto itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that's what I'm saying. You know, every day, he was saying, every day, get up and say, I'm committed to releasing everything inside of me that's unlike love. And, and, and what's so cool about that is the more you feel innocent and you feel lovable and you feel deserving, then the more good you're going to allow in. So it's not like you're even so much doing it for everybody else. You're really just increasing your own capacity to receive all that your new self can receive from the universe and from the spirit. Because it told us our creator's will for us is to be happy. Mm -hmm. It's for us to be happy. Mm -hmm. you know. And what's needed more in this world than for people to see joy? Mm -hmm. Think about it. Anybody else mm -hmm. got any thoughts? Yes. Um, is this something that the way of mastery describes as being something that happens once or many times? Because I was kind of thinking about like the overlap of this idea of turning your will over to mm -hmm. you know your true self, your higher power, whatever you want to call it. And for me, that's always been something that I have to continually do, like on a daily basis. Which is which is exactly right. But like in like Christianity and stuff, there's like this idea of like you're you're reborn and then you're like saved, you know. And so I was just kind of curious where it points. Well, it's it's, a, it's, a, it's it's both of them. Yeah, you, you're, you're already saved. We don't know it, and we're being reminded, and we're being taught how to let go of the blocks to the realization that we already loved, which is already saved. Okay. Okay. That and then makes sense. And, okay, and then we're having day to day exercises that we're being given to keep us conscious of the fact of who we yeah. really are True. And, that, and that we are loved. And that, you know, it's sort of like I've used the analogy many times and I said really quickly, getting on a roller coaster, everybody gets on at the same time, everybody comes back to the place they started. Mm -hmm. Some people on a roller coaster screaming to the top of their lungs in absolute terror. Some people are, are, are jumping up and down and it's the most fun they've ever had in their life but they're all going to end up exactly where they started. Truth is teaching us how to be the people that's happy on the roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to all get back, but some people, they're going to get back and they would have put themselves through hell 
to come through the, come back to the realization of where they begin. And then some of us are going to enjoy the entire ride. And that's what this is. It's like saying, this is what's going to keep you cool, especially when you having one of those really deep dips. You know what I'm saying? Because don't forget, you're going to come back to where you started. And we started in love. We started in eternity. We started in light. We started in spirit. We temporarily, in order to have this experience, pretended that we are separate bodies in a world that sometimes appear to be victims of what happened to us so that we can have this great cosmic drama that we use to remember who we really are. Some of us remember that we're actors in the play. Some people lose their mind and they think they're the actors in the play. And the ones who believe they're the actors in the play are the miserable ones you see walking around who really think they are what they think they are, and they think they are what they were taught they are, and they think they are what they were told they are. Mm. And then you got some beings that are awakening beings that are coming back in the realization that they're not the role that they're playing. So then they can consciously be in the play and really have a good time. Because they also realized they were the one that accepted the part they're playing in the play. Mm -hmm. You know, you when I was in the theater, you would audition for different parts, but it ultimately it was up to you to accept the part you were offered. And the ones that you went out on stage to do your thing, you didn't stop in the middle of it and go, hey, I'm really Earl Purdy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you act like you come, you fully into it. And then the person that killed you in the play, if it was a drunk murder play, you uh, having to forgive them in the play, and you might go through something of all the intense counseling you need to forgive them in the play, but since it's a play, you know they didn't really do anything to you, and when the play is over, you all the one is going out for a chai. <laughs> the same person that just got to murdering you every night. <laughs> okay, same thing here, but we forget it. And so we think what we see is what's really happening, and you can always tell how much you've forgotten the truth by how much fear and misery you have how much anxiety you have. That just means you've forgotten that you're not the, at the role you're playing. Mm -hmm. And this is a play that everybody wins. Mm -hmm. This is the play that everybody wins. Anybody else want to share anything before we go deeper? This is a mm -hmm. really interesting section. It's like Spirit is telling us we're about to be reborn into something very mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, well, I've just had an experience where I've just been like, Fuck it. I am so done struggling with this particular thing that I'm putting it down. And I'm quitting my job on Friday. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be in grad school full time so that I can really dig my hands into something that I really love. And I've actually been like asking for like what can I do to really I guess start this journey kinda wholeheartedly and you just you just gave it to me. Is that so cool? I'm really and grateful. And that grad school is just around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> and then the spiritual level. Literally in a week. Right. Yeah. And, and literally, in a spiritual, a spiritual level, you go, this day I'm going to extend my treasure in grad school. How can I add to exactly. that? Exactly. Because what happens is you take, you take these prayers and if you really want to make them powerful, you make them specific. You know, like the, there's a lesson in the Course in Miracles says, you know, I'm never upset for the reason I think. Well, to make it specific, I'm never upset about my boss for the reason I think. I'm mm -hmm. never upset about my finances for the. Make it specific. It says that application <coughs> is specific. And when you use the truth enough in specific situations, he says, then your mind starts to automatically generalize it to every situation in an understanding far greater than you now possess. So before you know it, you're applying the truth to everything equally, and so therefore, you get the same result from everything. And the parts of your life that seem to be the hardest and that's presenting you with the most struggle, that's the part of your life that you're handling. Uh, <laughs> yep. Okay? Okay. That's the part of your life that you're handling separate from source. Mm -hmm. okay. Which has nothing to do with how much money you have or how much fame you have because that's neutral. So you can have not a dollar bill in the world and still be completely peaceful as someone that had two million dollars mm -hmm. because it's just a perception of how I'm looking at it. Right. But if you're struggling with that idea, then that's your way of knowing that you still think you're the one that's in charge. Mm -hmm. So, a tr your true self knows that's not true. Your true self knows that all you have to do is allow your mind to be the way that the Creator is flowing through to extend the love and the treasure. Exactly. 
In other words, it's almost like you are the hose and God is the water. And you're willing to be used to let that water through because you get wet too if you were the hose. Mm -hmm. You know, so all of y'all are a bunch of hoes. <laughs> <laughs> H O S E. H O S E. <laughs> remember how did he, how, remember what did he just tell what spirit just tell us? It told us say how do you, how do you, how do you do this? It said you would do it by being patient and being joyful, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why I just refuse to have, you know, classes that are serious. Because being serious is how you get into the world of fear and struggle to begin with, mm -hmm. which isn't the same as saying you are sincere. Mm -hmm. You can be sincere without being a stick in the mud, dead, dry, and serious. Okay? Because I don't believe I attract people with any consistency to my class who want it the way that it's usually done which is in pure quietness, low-key, cerebral, no energy, no laughing. Some people, that's how they need it. Everybody attracts the teacher that's perfect for them. So I'm perfect. <laughs> for some people. And some people, I'm not their cup of tea. But I'm definitely their cup of chai. <laughs> cup of chai. Cup of chai. That's my spirit. <clears throat> Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go see. Who are you going to see? I'm going to see Kumbaja. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else before we go on? I'd love to hear what you think and how you're reacting and responding to this, but we can go on. Okay. Well, so I'm, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you heard something that was helpful to you. Yeah. Well, I'm... Uh, I'm hearing you, and, and I'm liking what I'm hearing for the most part. I mean, you know, I, I've been hearing you for a while, and, and, I, and I love what you're saying. In this event, I'm having a little trouble with this event, and I realize that's, you know, whatever kind of program that I have going on in my head, whatever kind of fear I have going on in my head, nonetheless, <coughs> I learned from the movie going on, and I learned how to do my part better and better, and I learned how to let go better and better, um, but I'm just not ready for the event, this one-time event where, you know, seven weeks from now, this is what I'm going to do. Well, the one, when it says one-time event, it's, it's talking about this is the time that you make your, this is the time that you're making your declaration that you're allowing yourself to be more creative than ever before, and you're willing to let that which is new come into your life at a level that you've never let it happen before. And that's, that's the main thing, is just saying this is the day that I've chosen, that I'm willing to be reborn into something even more loving than I've ever imagined before. It's, it's almost like me saying, instead of, instead of me constantly saying, I want to be loving, 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 one day I'll be more loving, one day I'll be more spiritual, one day I'll be more powerful, one day I know that I'm really one with God, one with, one, one with everybody, and then all of a sudden, bam, that's your identity. That's how you're seeing yourself now. And then what do you start creating from that perspective? Mm -hmm. So when it says event, it's talking about you making that decision when you choose to. And then once you make that decision, allowing yourself to be, born, be reborn into an even greater loving being than you already are. Mm -hmm. okay. And as long as you're in time, it's going to look like it's ever increasing and ever expanding. So you get a chance to have what you think of as change and still look like you're changing, but actually you're not changing. You see, if you were created to constantly expand in love, then if you're constantly expanding in love, you're not really changing. <laughs> because that was what you were created to do. So you're really the same, but you're constantly changing but you're changing in a way that brings you even greater and greater and greater acceptance of that light and that energy that you are. Because we aren't really bodies, we're light. Mm -hmm. We're not even bodies, we're light. And so we've forgotten that we're light. And now we think that we're bodies. And we're just simply being told, you're not the costumes you're wearing. That's all. That's all. 
You're not the costumes you're wearing. I'm not this body costume called Earl Purdy Black Man in America. So, so I have fun with being Earl Purdy Black Man in America because I, it's not who I am. So I can work it any way I want to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can I can enjoy being a man much more than a man who thinks he's a man. Because yeah. I can decide to act according to the man stuff if I want to or not. I'm not trapped in the identity that the world told me that I needed to have, so I don't feel limited. And we all can do that tonight. That is not something that has to wait. We're just waiting because it's still part of the fear that we have of being ourselves. Yeah. And part of the, what, what the Course is trying to get us in these books, trying to get us to do, to let go of the guilt and fear that keeps us from joining in love. So I'm not waiting for any other part of myself to do it. I'll do it. So is this a tool that we can use if we choose to, if this tool resonates with us? Because there are so many other tools as well. That's the cool part. Yeah, yeah to use the tool that resonates. Like, like if, for instance, if the, the truth would say, uh, don't focus, and this is going to really blow some people away because it's the total opposite to what the world teaches. It says, you know, don't dwell on what you don't understand and what you don't want to do. <laughs> right. So, so it would say, if you had a problem with the idea of event, then don't do it. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Do something else that you would hear out of all the ideas you would hear. Do the thing you hear that you have no resistance to. Where the, where the world would say, take the thing you have the most resistance to and spend all your time trying to understand it and get rid of the resistance. Mm -hmm. The truth would say, that's the last thing to focus on is what you don't understand because that emphasizes your feeling of helplessness and makes you feel even weaker than you were in the beginning. So it's really a trick of our ego to make us constantly focus on what we don't like, what we don't understand. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens. We come to things and we are here 15 things that we totally agree with that we could use. And the mind will pick out the one thing mm -hmm. that we don't agree with, and mm -hmm. that will become the focus of our energy because that can be used to make us feel confused or wonder if something's wrong. So it's a trick. Mm -hmm. That's why I say when I teach, walk away with one idea that you feel okay about, put it into practice, and it will lead you to all truth. One truth will lead you to all truth. You know, one way to city park would lead me to the whole city park, <laughs> right? And then there are a lot of ways to get there, but if I just took one way that was the right way, I'd get to the same place you are. It's the same thing here, but our ego, fearful mind, goes straight for the thing that creates the feeling of separation and fear, right? Uh, because, you see, the movie already has turned out. It's certain that you're going to end up in love and peace and joy. So even your questioning was part of the script of what you went through mm -hmm. to get to the end of the movie. Mm -hmm. so, so there's no way you can express yourself that's not being incorporated in the movie if the movie is already done and you end up in total truth and peace. Mm -hmm. So that's why you don't have to feel guilty even about your resistance or what you don't understand. It was all what you went through to come back to the realization of who you really are. Mm -hmm. You can't lose. And that's what we're looking for is how we can lose. Mm -hmm. And that's why, so that's why when we're listening, the part of our mind that's in fear and doubt, it's looking for any hole in the premises we can possibly find in what we're hearing. There's one part of our mind that, that's, I'm trying to find the flaw in this. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find the flaw in this. I, you're trying to see what he's saying and how it can't work and how it can't be. You know what I'm saying? And so I realize that there's a part of me that's like that, so I go ahead and let that part of me feel whatever it wants to feel, and then ask, you, ask Spirit, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to say? Who do you want me to say it to? I want to know the correct way of looking at this. So he says doubt is going to come and it's going to go. So if we could make it okay to have doubt, we would move faster. Um, um, how can you not succeed if, if only weakness stands in the way? Mm. Because weakness has no power. Oh, that's your weakness? Then it has no power. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about your, what you think of as your weaknesses. It, it would have to be weak. 
<laughs> that's why it's called weak. That's, yeah, weakness means weak. Oh, it, weakness yeah. doesn't mean I have a weakness that's so strong <laughs> that it's keeping me from doing anything. Think about that. You know, I have a weakness that's so weak it can stop me. No. It, you know, it's like, it's, no, it's just the opposite. You have tolerance for the weakness and it will never stop you. Amen. Not intolerance for your weaknesses, tolerance yes. for your weaknesses. I sometimes. I sometimes become afraid. I'm going to be tolerant of that. Why? Because if I'm tolerant of it, I won't judge myself harshly about it, and I'll move on to the thing that I can do without fear. Mm -hmm. Right? So it says, then stand and... Uh, okay, okay, let me go back to the verse. It then says, regardless... Oh, this is really deep. It says, when you journey back to your home on that date or the morning of your chosen day... Then what you're going to do on the same day that you celebrate your new self, which is celebrating your birthday, mm -hmm. you're celebrating your birthday. You've just been reborn. You're celebrating your birthday. This is the day you've consciously chosen to be a part of the creation of the new. Mm -hmm. Okay? Then it says... Um, I can handle taking, <laughs> it's funny, Joshua was saying, and you don't be celebrating my birthday on the 25th, I can handle that. I need you to celebrate yours. <laughs> then it says, be joyous and celebrate in a very specific way, in whatever way you wish. <laughs> okay, very specific about how you should celebrate, right? Whatever way you wish, and know that the new age, the new day has done. Never again will you ever be able to convince yourself, never again will you ever be able to convince yourself that there is an excuse for believing in anything that is less than you having an enlightened love Christ consciousness. In other words, when you hear stuff like this, a person could never come back to the class again, but they still heard that they are loved, they are lovable, they are powerful, they are creating their reality, they are not a victim of the world, they see they have another choice, there's another way you can do it. So you've been exposed whether or not you ever use any of it. It's in you now. And you can pretend, but it's in you now. You know? And you'll find that the more you spiritually awaken, the less you'll be able to tolerate minor intrusions of discomfort. Mm. So becoming spiritually awakened doesn't mean you become more tolerant of your suffering and you're able to suffer longer and better than ever. <laughs> right? Because you're now spiritual, so now you can suffer longer and better than ever. He says it's really just the opposite. The once you begin to wake up, you recognize there is no need for you to suffer. And that makes you more impatient with suffering. So the more you study this stuff, the less you're going to be able to put up with a life that's not fulfilling to you. Just like you say, I got to let go. I got to let go of the job or whatever, you know, because you can't say that with me. I was in corporate America, you know, you know, all the whole thing. I had all the, uh, I had the most American dream you could imagine. But I wasn't happy. I would, go, I would get out of my car, have my briefcase, go in my office. On the way to the office, I'd speak to everyone. And I was, I was one of those very infamous first blacks, you know, I, you know, the first black to do this and then the first black to do that, but I was one of those. You know, I was the first black executive in the phone company in the whole city of Memphis. I was the first black that was ever hired as a telephone installer. You know, I was all I was I was first black and it don't know, you know. And <laughs> <laughs> Boom, blacker, blacker, blacker. <laughs> <laughs> it was what I call my black abolical plan. <laughs> <laughs> and, but one day I would have so I get out the car, go, you know, walk through the office and speak to everybody and close the door and fall on the floor and crack. <laughs> I was miserable. And I can remember sitting in the office dreaming of one day I'll be able to teach and do metaphysical stuff and do astrology and all this stuff that I wanted to do. And it just seemed like the most far out dream in the world. But then I did what it said. It's my consciousness. It's my thoughts. It's my beliefs. Get rid of the blocks. Pay attention. Tune into your higher self. I just started doing what these things were saying and I watched everything start to arrange itself so that I could have the goal that I set for myself because it teaches right here in the, uh, in the Course in Miracles in the, in the Way of Mastery that the goal will create the means for you to achieve it. So it's more important to know what you want than how to get it. Yeah. It's more important to know what you want than how to get it. Mm 
Most people focus on how to get it more than focusing on what they want. So it's telling us that I, to be joyous, celebrate in whatever way you wish, and know that the new age, the new day has done. Never again will you be able to convince yourself that there's an excuse for believing in anything that is less than an enlightened Christ consciousness. Regardless of when you may be listening to these words, the same truth applies. So it's saying it doesn't matter what day you choose to do this. It doesn't even matter when you choose to do this. He says, but you choose the date. You might choose a date one day when you go, okay, it makes sense to me now. I can relate to it. My inner self is giving me another interpretation of what I heard, and now I feel okay about doing it now. He says, choose a date approximately, what, seven days, seven weeks in the future that, that to say that's going to signify your day of rebirth and surrender to this process, surrender to this process, surrender to this process I've described each day until that day arrives. Your instruction is given. Reflect well on what has been given, for we have been stepping into some very simple, very simple, very simple, very simple. Has, have, have, has anyone in here heard anything that you're not capable of doing if you so choose? No. That's how you know it's the truth. The truth is always something you can do now. Mm -hmm. What's the illusion is always something you're going to do in the past or the future. Mm -hmm. The truth never requires anything that you can't provide and have access to right now. You know, like if I set a goal for myself from listening to this stuff, the first thing I go is let me do an inventory of the resources that are available to me right here, right now, in my reality, without having to buy anything, get anything, try to get anybody to do anything. What is already available right now, because if it's God's plan, it's going to always involve something that's already available to me now. <coughs> And they have never done that and not had the resources. Mm -hmm. It just takes another attitude, right? It's just another way of looking at it. Which, what's harder? To say, I'm going to have my happiness three or four months from now in some way, or to go, there's a way for me to have it right now with the resources and the people and everything that's available to me within and without right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I really want an iPad mini on this tray. God, instant manifestation. <laughs> Whenever you ask for what you already have, you can have it instantly. That's why we're being told you already have love, you already have abundance, you already have the right relationship, you have already have everything you want, you just don't know it and see it yet. So when you pray, ask to be able to recognize what you already have. Mm -hmm. It says that's the true prayer. Yes. And the average person does not do that. They no. ask for everything based on the idea they don't have it and they need to get it and somebody else has got it who don't want to give it to. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I try to always ask for what I can have. I'm kind of like spoiled about having what I want. <laughs> it's a radical concept. And you know, what, you know what happens? And out of that sense of satisfaction and appreciation of what's already available to you, that extends into the next moment and that creates satisfaction. But we already have learned that what? It always increases and expands because that's the nature of our source. So you don't have to worry about that, right? One peach seed produces what? A peach tree with thousands of peaches. Mm -hmm. One peach seed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we forget that. That's just as true of us. The universe is naturally about abundance. Even after abundance, we'd have to be blind not to know that. Yes. So why don't you and I share it? It's because we see ourselves as separate from all that is. Mm -hmm. And when you see yourself as separate from it, you're not connected to it, so it can't flow through your life. He calls the miracle says, see everybody's joy as your joy, and you will see it flow through your experience because you're not disconnected from it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Isn't that simple? Mm. So simple. It's, so, it's ridiculously yes. simple. But if you don't think you deserve to have happiness, you will never do the simple things that will allow you to have it. That's and you'll right. say, this is another class. It sounded cool. <laughs> I tried to stay awake. <laughs> they gotta try to, they gotta try to find another one. You know? Right? It's just like a person saying I wanna bake a cake and they get a recipe book 
And then they look at the oven and see if the cake is there. <laughs> <laughs> and then they go, I know what the problem is. I need to go get another recipe book. <laughs> and that's people who go from one class to one teaching to another workshop to another class. They're just gathering recipe books without ever baking the cake. Wow. Yeah. The person that makes the difference is the person that says, I've tried a lot of recipes, this is the one I want to work, this is the recipe book that seems to be my recipe book to get to my cake. Mm -hmm. That's where the Course of Miracles and the Way of Mastery, Course of Love, have been for me. Astrology, numerology, all those things. They've been the recipe book that when I got those, I did it. So your recipe book is the one you will do. If this is not something you will do, it's okay to continue to listen to what's being said, but it might not be your recipe book, or you would want to, you would be going, okay, seven weeks from now, I'm going to, I'm gonna have a day, I'm gonna get up and say, I'm committed today to experience, you know, you would know it because you would apply it. Mm. I couldn't help but try to do what the Course was saying, even though it was blowing my mind just like it does just yours, and, and some of the way it reads, it was hard, I still could not put it down because it was my path. So if it's your path, you'll get mad at it, you will get upset with it, it'll make you angry, it'll make you happy, but you won't put it down. Mm -hmm. If it's your path, you that's won't put it down. That's how you know. I do okay. love cake. Mm -hmm. I love cake. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate cake. <laughs> with uh, yellow insides. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see much of those nowadays, you know? With chocolate all over. Mm -hmm. Chocolate all over. Well, in, in this life, I was sure that I wanted to deal with the shadow side. <laughs> I made sure I wasn't going to forget that. Right? <laughs> so, um, see, I think it's fun that we have diversity. And we, we have different colored bodies and different mm -hmm. backgrounds. I don't run away from that because I think that's what made, that's why we did this, y'all. Mm -hmm. We did it so that we could experience the God as God as all we are mm -hmm. and all these variety of shapes and forms and stuff. So as long as we don't forget we're one, we can have fun with what appears to be the diversity and the differences. Yeah. As long as we don't forget we're one. Mm -hmm. But if we forget we're one, we'll have a world that we see. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. Which is a lot of fear. A lot of conflict. A lot of conflict broken into by movies. <laughs> Going to the movies. So, your instruction is given. Reflect well on what has been given, for we have been stepping into some very simple and very powerful what? Initiations mm -hmm. that were once given to me as I too awaken to the reality that only the Christ, the true self, love dwells within me. So, beloved friends, I want you to reflect well on all that has been shared. Don't take this lightly, <laughs> although it is only filled with light. <laughs> I want you to consider each phrase, consider each sentence. I want you to even consider the spaces between the words. For in those spaces, that's when the revelations can come. Mm -hmm. So it's time to birth fully the presence of the peaceful Christ, the true self, the love within you. Peace be you, peace be unto you always, and always am I with you. Amen. Amen. So so we're gonna do a meditation into the heart of our true self. And what that means, lesson the seven, is we're gonna go we're gonna get into the heart. Any questions, any comments about that before we go to lesson eleven? Is there anything you heard tonight that you loved? that you'd like to just say, you know, one thing I heard that really inspired me was? The universe is set up to make your abundance and happiness easy and effortless. The universe is just set up to provide for you. And so letting yourself have that is just being natural. Yeah, the, the, yeah. we're being taught how to be natural again. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've forgotten what's natural. Yes, we have. Yeah, anybody else? I like patience. Yeah. When I pray, uh, ask to recognize what I already have. Yeah, when I pray, I need to ask. I know it says, I need to ask to be able to recognize, right, what I already have. Yeah, my brother. Patience is the absence of doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's the absence of doubt. It's, it's being certain of the outcome. Mm -hmm. 
And it's easier, it's easier to be certain of the outcome if you're trusting in that which cannot fail. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Anybody else? Spiritual evolution means that I am less patient with any kind of suffering. Mm -hmm. I won't put up with any drama. And, and you know why? He said the reason why you won't put up with it is because you know it doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. But we were brought up, to, oh, it's just natural to suffer. Yeah. You know, it's just natural to be unhappy. That's just the way it is. That's just the human condition. Oh, so okay. then people think being spiritual be, is being patient with their suffering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why if you're in a relationship and it's abusive in any way, you can't stay in it. If you're in anything, people say, well, you just need to change your mind about it. Yeah, that would work too. You can always change your perception. Uh, but sometimes it's easier to just go the other way. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work for me. It, 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 it's a line in the course in, 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 it, it says recognize misery and go the other way. <laughs> you know, I'm walking, I'm hiking, I'm, I'm hiking, and then a bear comes at me, I'm not going to process. <laughs> Why is the bear here? What caused the bear here? Did I create the bear? Was the bear created by God? Why did God create the bear? Is the bear real? <laughs> you know, you're not gonna do that. You're gonna recognize it and you get your butt the other way, if any way possible. You know, so don't believe that just because you're in something miserable, you're bailing just because you choose not to stay in it forever. Mm -hmm. You know, I give you permission to not suffer. Mm. Yeah, thank, yeah, thank you, you very much. You know, I give you the freedom you already have. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. I completely yeah. order you to do as you choose. <laughs> You're being cult. completely controlled. This is a cult. This is a freedom cult. Yeah, this, is a, this is a freedom cult. I control you by not controlling you. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Isn't that diabolical? It's black about black about. That's, that's, that's a step more. That's, that's, more that's even worse, you know. You know, especially in the South. Okay. Now, is it legal? Yes, yeah, it's, it's not even legal oh, in the South right. to be black. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Uh, That's why you're the That's right. <laughs> That's why I'm here. You know. See, people just thought I just decided to go to something bigger and better to leave Memphis and to come here. I was ran out of town. <laughs> <laughs> He's too. He's saying there is no sin, there is no guilt. We're yeah, innocent. We're totally out. loved, and we're free. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. Send him to hell. That's right. That's right. That, well, that was my first miracle that I did teach all that on my own television show on Sunday morning in, in four years in the place that's the belt buckle of the Bible belt. When I was teaching with the course teachers about our sinlessness and our guiltlessness, and didn't get ten negative calls. Oh. That doesn't happen in the South. Wow. <laughs> but it happened to me wow. because it wasn't me. That's what I'm saying. If, if you tap into your greater self, God, spiritual self, higher power, I'm just going to list the roll out until we get able to handle words. Uh, <laughs> your life will work easier, better, and faster <laughs> towards your joy. I'm sorry, what did you say? Resign <laughs> now oh. as your own teacher. Oh. Okay. Resign now as your own teacher, which you would surely do if you're honest with yourself about how successful you've been in giving yourself permanent happiness. Right, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, so resign. That's all your higher self is waiting for you to do. Because like when you were a kid, your mama said, just and you know that you can help me, just go sit down in the corner and let me finish doing what I got to do. Yeah. <laughs> That's what God is saying to us. Why don't y'all just sit down in the corner and <laughs> give you what you want? Yeah. Good grief. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and Jesus, J-E-S dash us. Uh -huh. Just us. Just us. It's just, just us. us. It's just us. <laughs> so call to just us. Knock, 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 who's there? Just us. <laughs> <laughs> and you get a chance to be special, and you get a chance to still be unique, because you already are. Yeah. I'm telling you, you're already unique. Yeah. You pulled it off. All of us look different. We all got our own thoughts and personalities. So don't work on trying to be special. You already are special. Yeah. Remember, we're the same behind the specialness. 
That's what would heal us now. Yeah. You don't have to worry about that. There's nobody else like you. I never meet anybody else like you. If you are it. And you're the only one that I can ever meet like you forever. And I'm going to appreciate that because you're a part of me. And I'm a part of you. You know, I don't know what to tell me. I, you know, I'm, I'm experiencing myself as female. I'm experiencing myself as male. I'm experiencing myself in all the ages and social economic groups around me. It's, we're t it's just one of us here. It's just one of us here. And even if you think that way and don't tell anybody around you that you're thinking that way, you are still drawing different reflection and personality out of the person you're talking to, even if they know nothing about this. Mm. It will freak you out. You just remember it. And people who have never picked up any of this, if you do this sincerely, you will tap into the part of them that knows they are acting. Mm. And they'll say stuff like, normally I used to go off if somebody do that, but for some reason with you, I didn't even get upset when you did that. Mm. <laughs> you get that kind of stuff. I, I was with you and I did something I just don't normally, I don't normally trust people the way I'm trusting. You get those kind of statements when you're, well, it's me and I know who you are and you're not fooling me with this act that you think we're really separate and that we're really not part of the one. I'm sorry. But I won't scare your ego, so therefore I'll talk to you in a normal way. I'll even say, do you know the Broncos are doing their practice? You think pain is as old as pain is? You think it will really do good? Really? Mm -hmm. I was just wondering about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you a plumber? Oh, well, let me talk to you about plumbing. Hey, how do y'all get a toilet to flush on the 35th floor? <laughs> <laughs> That water pressure has to be perfect. <laughs> Always find something you can join with the person with, no matter what it is, and that will lead you to joining in other things. Just like the same thing about the one road would lead you to City Park. Don't try to talk to them about something that frightens them. Mm -hmm. You start with, where can I com communicate with you mm -hmm. that we will have the least amount of fear? Mm -hmm. And then the more we trust each other, the more we'll be open to hearing each other's points of view without fear. It's not complicated. If you're going to learn how to forgive, don't start with the person that you got the biggest grievance with. Mm -hmm. The person that you think has wronged you the most, put them at the back of the line. Start with the person who took your basket in the store when you was on another aisle. Them. Yeah. We found oh, it. Then y'all gotta forgive each other. Yeah. That was her. Yeah. Oh, my oh, surprise. My, oh, my <laughs> <laughs> Give her her zucchini. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was wearing a zucchini to the beach just the other day. Oh, <laughs> I'd like to see that. <laughs> It was a big zucchini. <laughs> of course. Of course, of course, of course it was. Of course it was. Of course it was. <laughs> and I go off. We've been going off like this for 30 years. So yeah, bear with us. Okay. We laugh together and we remember the truth together. We laugh together and remember the truth together. And we, watch, we have watched miracles after miracles after miracles after miracles happen in our life. Mm -hmm. You know, I met Anna when she was 17. It was a trip. You know, the very first seminar out of town. Anna was the one who sponsored it, and she had over 100, and 100 people that, come, that came in. How old were you? I was still in high school. <laughs> <laughs> she was still in high school. Wow. And she promoted a, a workshop for me. And, uh, and it, but she was into it. She was into it. So age has nothing to do with anything ultimately, but that's just the illusion of the age of your body. Our souls are all the same age. Ageless, <laughs> right? Yeah. Our egos might be the age we think we are. Our bodies may be the age we think we are. But who we really are, that soul knowledge is equally available to all of us. I met 13 years old teaching the course who taught more truth than people who were four times their age. Yeah. And I met people who were older than me who were just as asleep as if they never picked up the book and they've been studying it for 40 years. <laughs> and could quote everything the course was saying, <laughs> but there was no heart anywhere. It was all the intellectual, conceptual game. You know, but if you act like you were gonna hug them, they die. 
<laughs> At the same time, they say, I'm one with you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, let's acknowledge ourselves. Let's stop right here. That was a cool stuff. So, what I think I'll do, uh, what I'll do is, I, at the end, I want to go over one more time that what you do when you get up in the morning okay. thing. And then, so we can kind of finish on actually doing that. Um, let's do the uh, financial expression of appreciation. Please, y'all, I appreciate you sharing with me with this stuff, my full-time Course in Miracles way of mastery and ministry. And also, those online, if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, just go to my website, girlherdy.com. There you go, baby. <laughs> and I'm available for one on one sessions called Clarity Sessions, where we take all of these principles and apply it to your personal situation to help you get past any block that you're going through right now. And also, if you're open to it, I also use my intuitive knowledge through astrology and numerology, which, for those of you who are judging that, is just another way to be communicated with through spirit. You know, there is no one certain way for spirit to reach us, as much as our egos would like to think so. God is not limited by our limited thinking. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad of that. <laughs> Another thing, too, is you begin to really accept this is true, you're going to draw to you quite naturally other people who also have a similar mindset, and you'll be able to move even faster because you'll be surrounded by people reflecting <coughs> the truth back to you. So whenever it seems like you're going through a period that you're alone in something, it usually probably means you're in transition. I call it being in the hallway between the classes. Mm -hmm. And so if you, so when you're making a transition from one state to another one, it's a period of disorientation and confusion that you go through. So confusion is a very high state. Confusion just means you let go of one way of thinking, but you haven't completely embraced a new way yet. So you're confused. So don't, don't that does, that's not a bad <coughs> thing. That's a good thing. Because how could you really be changing and not go through some disorientation and confusion? Mm -hmm. How could you not be changing and still be tempted sometimes to still do the old way mm -hmm. as opposed to the, to the new way? So be gentle with yourself while you're in transition. People who think exactly like the world, they're not in conflict because they're sure they're a victim. Mm -hmm. People who are totally have accepted that they're innocent and that they're powerful they're in their spirit, they're not in conflict. But if you're in between, going from the fearful mind to the totally loving mind, you're going to go back and forth between them for a while. But the loving part of you is going to become more and more attractive because the contrast is going to become too great. When you're hanging out with the same people that you're really able to be yourself and nobody's judging you and condemning you, and then you go hang out with your, with your past self that's always judging you and trying to control you and telling you exactly how you should do it, which, you're going to find that it's not going to be any real choice between which one of those energies you're going to want to join with. Mm -hmm. So the comparison and contrast is going to become greater and greater. You do stuff like, hmm, I notice I feel good when I'm over here. Hmm, I notice that I don't make myself feel too good over here. So I'm going to go over there more and more. But the part of you that thinks you don't deserve that kind of joy is going to try to come up with every excuse in the world not to be around the people you know you enjoy the most. Mm -hmm. Something's going to always come up. Something's going to make you not go, I meant to go do that. I, I really enjoy that class. I meant to come, but blah, 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 blah. And then you find out you're still being drawn to the people in the situations that, that don't bring you any joy at all. Mm -hmm. And you'll be dealing with them the most. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have to ask the part of you that really loves you. You give it the power of attorney to overrule your ego. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, that's what you do. You say, decide for me, spirit, you know, decide for me, God, whatever. And that's what you give it up. Give up the power of eternity to the part of you that loves you for real. Yes. Not the part of you that's afraid of everybody and everything. Right? Good every day. You know, mm -hmm. and just every day, just like you were saying, this is an everyday thing. You know, you <laughs> get up every day and you do it. Okay, so would you just settle in and close your eyes and remember that. You are just ridiculously beautiful and holy and innocent. And you're good. You hear me? You are good. You're really good. You're great! <laughs> <laughs> Who recognized that voice? Who was that? Was that Tony? That was Tony, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's what I was saying. I'm telling Tony now. <laughs>
I see frosted flakes. <laughs> <laughs> no, my ego said, sorry, I called the ego. The ego said, no, you are frosted flakes. <laughs> <laughs> you are flakes. That's right, you got that pot, right? All you need is some milk. Okay. They'll get a voice like that, that always oh, puts you down, always. that always tries to find oh, something always. about you that's not cool, that it tries to tell you, always. you know. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> So close your eyes, realize that you're seeing nothing with your physical eyes anyway. Oh, that's good music for this interview. Stand with your arms, or sit with your arms at your sides and palms open. Breathe deeply into the body. Relax the mind, relax your behind. <laughs> and begin simply to say within yourself, and I'm going to say it, you say it to yourself. Death has occurred. And now the birth of my new self is at hand. Now the birth of my new self is at hand. Creator, I accept fully your will for me. Creator, I accept fully your will for me. I accept fully your will for me. I accept fully your will for me. Your will is only that I be happy. Your will is only that I be happy. Your will is only that I be happy. And I use time to extend my treasure. I use time to extend my treasure. Now, now I receive the warmth of your light and your love. Now I receive the warmth of your light and your love. Now wait. Receive the warmth of the light. For rest assured, if you are quiet, you can feel how the energy begins to affect the energy of your awareness, the sphere of your awareness, and of your body. Now we're gonna go out for a drink. Now we're gonna go in for a drink. Drink that solar energy. Imagine the sun. Drink that solar, spiritual, loving energy. Drink that solar energy in, through, every cell of your body. Drink this energy in through every cell of your body. Drink it in until you feel your very spinal column warmed. Imagine there is a flame going up your spine. Imagine there is a flame going up your spine, activating all your spiritual centers from the crown of your head to the tips of your toes. 
Imagine that light going down through each finger and coming out of each finger. Picture that there are rays of light, of love coming through your fingers, through your body. Then gently open your eyes with awareness and love and look around the room at everyone in the room. Try to make eye contact with as many people as you can. Let yourself see a new world. Let yourself see a new creation, a new beginning. And now the journey. Oh, let's do that one more time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look, at, look into the eyes, because that's where you see the windows to the soul. You are looking at yourself. And then you say to yourself, let me know this being as I know myself. Let me know this being as I know myself. Let me know this being as I know myself. Let me know this being as I know myself. Let me know this being as I know myself. Let me know this being as I know myself. Now the journey to the kingdom is over. We get to leave your glasses in the big basket. <laughs> now the journey to the kingdom of love is over. And guess what? The journey within it can begin. The journey within it can begin. The journey within it can begin. Now the journey within it can be, can be can begin. Graduate school is just around the corner. Graduate school is just around the corner. Graduate school is just around the corner. Family school is just around the corner. Now you've got to celebrate. Be joyous and celebrate. Be joyous and celebrate in whatever way you wish. Appreciate y'all, Holy Spirit. Hugs are available, you juicy, luscious beings from God. So you're new beings now. You're new beings. We didn't have to wait seven weeks. You didn't have to wait seven weeks. But don't forget, give that a try. Give, give yourself the seven weeks. And this was in chapter 10 of The Way of the Heart.